So we're learning about uh, programming interview questions that we could use in the Go programming language. So if you're a dev wanting to get a job as a Go programmer, uh, these uh, videos here, it's a whole playlist. There's a link to the playlist in the description down below. Go through all these questions. And if you're an organization wanting to hire Go developers, uh, you could use these questions uh, to, you know, uh, in your interview process. And so it could be a starting point for you to uh, develop questions in a, uh, to be used in an interview. And if you have, uh, if you want to access all these questions, you could go to github.com goes to 11, and it's in my repo, learn to code go version three. And, uh, and then here is where we have those questions. And if there are other questions you want to add to this, you could uh, do a pull request here and send me those questions and I'll pull them in. And uh, maybe if I get around to it, make a video about them. So uh, here are all those questions. And this is the code repo for my course to learn to code Google's Go programming language. And you can find that course on Udemy, Todd McLeod. There's that course right there. And, uh, and here's the outline for that course. It's 157 pages long at this point. And I'll put a link down to this outline down below also because we're gonna talk about value semantics and pointer semantics. And so uh, the question we're gonna go over in this video is explain value semantics and pointer semantics. What are rules of thumb for using one versus the other? So we're gonna look at this in more detail right now. So to understand that, we'll come over here and take a look at that. But value semantics is when the actual data of a variable is passed to a function or assigned to another variable. Right, so the actual data is passed. Uh, the new variable or function parameter gets a completely independent copy of the data. Everything in Go is passed by value, so it's all passed by value. And so that's what value semantics is, is basically we're not using pointers, uh, and everything in Go is passed by value. And I'm just gonna copy this because uh, I'm gonna bring this down here. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, uh, uh, every, uh, I'm just thinking about how much to copy there, so I'll just get this part right there. And then we have pointer semantics, which is when we're working with memory addresses. And so Go can be nuanced because you could be passing a value around, you could be passing a slice, and uh, you could be doing that with value semantics, right? I'm just passing a value. But the, the slice itself is a data structure which uses pointers and references memory in other locations. So the slice is a three word data structure where it's got a pointer and then it's got a length and it's got a slice uh, and it's got a cap. And so as you're using value semantics, you have to think about how is memory being referenced. And so working in Go, you, you, you know, Go is built to have mechanical sympathy and you know, the machine, the hardware is like the first level in the stack. And you have to think about how is memory being used and how if even if I'm using value semantics and I'm passing a slice, how is that slice referencing memory and what are, what are the implications of that? And will the backing array be destroyed and recreated because I've used append and grown the slice? And uh, so you wanna think about that. But value semantics is you're not working with pointers uh, uh, explicitly. You know, you're not passing pointers explicitly, you're just passing the values. And then pointer semantics is when you start passing a memory address or a pointer rather than the value itself. And when you do that, everything is still passed by value, right? So everything in Go is still passed by value. Um, even when you're passing addresses around, uh, people, you're passing that as a value. That value is an address. <laughs> it's a pointer. So everything in Go is still, point, uh, is still passed by value. So that's value semantics versus pointer semantics. And here's a little bit more information on them so, uh, versus pointer versus value semantics. So value semantics are simpler and safer, safer, but sometimes they're more inefficient. And pointer semantics can be more efficient and flexible, uh, but they could also uh, create bugs. And so pointer semantics are also good when you want to mutate state. I don't know why, uh, you know, when you want to change stuff, sometimes you want to lean on pointer semantics to make that happen. And so value semantics, we're copying values. Uh, copied values, passed by value, and pointer semantics, we're sharing the memory, but still we're, we're, we're sharing that as a value. The memory is a value which is being shared, so it's still copying values passed by value. And then here are the heuristics, which we've seen in some previous videos. So I'll, I'll just kind of let you take a look at those here, and you could pause the video and take a gander at them. But basically you wanna use value semantics when possible. It's simpler, it's safer. And uh, you know for built-in types and for reference types, you want to use um, value semantics as much as possible. And then for structs, you have more flexibility. And so the next rule of thumb is if uh, struct is like, you know, use pointer semantics if you have a large piece of data and by large, like 64 bytes or larger is a rule of thumb that I've heard people talk about. And then you want to also use pointer semantics for mutability. So if you have a struct and you want to mutate stuff, you can do that. 
Um, so, you know, methods that need to update the state of a struct, you could do that. And then be consistent in your code. So if you start out, you know, uh, using one or the other for certain portions of your code, you want to stick with that. Keep it one way or the other. And, uh, and then, you know, pointer semantics can be used also when interfacing with other code, like JSON unmarshal is an example of that. So those are some of the rules of thumb around value uh, semantics and pointer semantics, and there's a little bit more information on those. And uh, yeah, that's my answer for this question. And it also gives you a lot of room to provide additional information to think about it. If you've got anything else that you would say about value semantics or pointer semantics, like, you know, I know what I know, my knowledge isn't perfect. <laughs> Nobody has perfect knowledge. Nobody has complete understanding. But if you have more, it's a, it's a big topic. So if you have more that you think should be said about this one, leave it in the comments down below. I <laughs> would love to hear your responses and I'm sure other people would also benefit and value hearing your responses too. So what would you say about value and pointer semantics? It's a big topic. And uh, let's have some discussion about it down in the, the, what do they call it? Comments down below. <laughs> what do they call those? So uh, go ahead and post a comment down there and share your thoughts on value and pointer semantics. All right, that's this question. See you in the next video. You could click the link in the YouTube description to sub sub subscribe to this channel. And that will notify you when these new videos come out. There's also a link to the playlist where you can see all the videos for these Go language programming interview questions. See you in the next video. <laughs>